Hi, this is Jim Wright, and in our continuing lessons for Solid Edge Cam Pro, we will now move in to show how to mill the little plus sign that is on top of our part to be machined. Some concepts that we'll talk about on this lesson. We'll talk about how to open a recent file from the History tab. We'll show you how to turn on or off the MCS display. We'll then move into creating an operation at first without a cutting tool so that we can show you how to choose a cutting tool within the operation itself. We'll also show some ways to gather information while you're in the middle of a process such as creating an operation or setting some parameters for that operation. We'll use the search function within an operation and then finally we'll use click and drag to move objects once they have been created. Let's get started. You may notice if you've watched previous lessons that Solid Edge Cam Pro color scheme has changed. That's because I've upgraded to the next version of Solid Edge Cam Pro. This is a Solid Edge Cam Pro designed for Solid Edge 2021 and it's based on NX 1926. So that's the reason for the color change. But the options I use will be largely the same, so other than the color change, there shouldn't be much difference. Let's call up the part from our previous lesson. And we can do that by clicking on the resource bar and then choosing the history tab, which shows us recently opened files. So I can just click on that and it will open up that assembly file. Now one thing that annoys me a little bit is to see the machine coordinate system here being displayed all the time. Typically when I'm working I don't like to see that so I will turn that off menu format MCS display just click on that and that'll turn it off. In a future lesson we'll talk about what the MCS is and how it's different than the WCS but but for now I just want to turn that off so I don't have to look at it. We have uh, face the top of this part so we can show that very quickly by choosing verify toolpath 3d dynamic and we'll just run through that we are using a zig only motion to remove the material from the top of the part but now we need to machine the plus sign so how do we do that well if we choose create operation there are several different operations in this template mill planner that we can use and the next one on the list kind of looks like it will do the job that we want cut floors and walls so this would be a floor these sides of the plus sign would be walls so that looks appropriate for us so let's try it I will create this operation without a tool because I want to show you how easy it is to specify a tool once you're inside the operation itself so the geometry here will be the workpiece. This is where we specify the part and the blank geometry and of course the check geometry also. The method we will use, mill finish. And we can call this operation anything or we can just leave it with the default name of floor wall. So I choose OK. Now the operation is created. And just like before, even though it's a different operation type, it's fairly easy to navigate through here to see what we need to do. We have a, an option here called Cut Area Floor, and that's exactly what I want to do first. So I'll choose the, the face there that represents the floor that I want to cut. And then for the walls, we have this sweet little button called Automatic Walls. We can simply turn that on, and then we can already look at the walls that are being machined. So it knew that was the floor so it automatically picked any faces that came up from that and those are now wall geometry. We'll change the cut pattern to follow part. In a future lesson we'll talk a little bit more in detail about follow part, follow periphery. And finally I'll set the percentage of step over. Remember we've, we've addressed this a little bit. I'll set the percentage of step over to 35% Oh, but we haven't picked a tool yet, right? So let's do that. The tool is none. We'll choose Create New. 
and we can use our handy dandy library and say retrieve from the library. We're going to go for an end mill this time, indexable. But what size should this tool be? Hmm, that's a good question. What we can do is we can do an investigation of this corn radius on this face and find out. So, to do that, we choose the analysis portion of the ribbon bar. We say, find out what the minimum radius is of this face. So that radius of that face is seven millimeters. Multiply that times two will get you the diameter required for the tool. So the largest the tool should be here is 14 millimeters. Notice that I did that information right in the middle of choosing my tool and it went right back to where I was before. That's very handy. We can now search for a tool that is less than 14 millimeters in diameter. Choose OK. Now I can I can force the diameter of these tools to be in ascending or descending order simply by clicking on the button. So 13.9, 12.7, here's a 12 millimeter tool. What does that look like? Well, it's a little bit longer than we actually need. What about this one? Also very long. How about this one? Okay, that's shorter and it looks like it has the, enough flute length to do the job that we need. So I'll choose OK. And here's another nice little arrangement. Because we said I want to retrieve that tool from the library, the system automatically put that tool in the next available slot in the carousel. So here's our tool and here's our operation inside that, inside that tool or underneath that tool. Are we ready to generate an operation? I think so. Remember, there's two ways to do this. You can either click on the generate button on the dialog or you can click on the generate button on the ribbon. Right, so we've got an operation and it looks not too bad. Um, I don't like having these uh, little sharp corners here because that means the tool is probably doing a full width of cut and we'll talk about that in a future lesson also. So I want to um, turn on path smoothing and if you remember we talked about path smoothing in our last lesson but where is it at on this list? Well, I'm not exactly sure so the binoculars here can help me out. I simply type in smoothing and it gives me several options of where smoothing might be and I want to turn on yes yeah, smoothing all but the last pass I click on that it takes me in the dialog position to where that is so for smoothing, I do not want that on all passes, but all but the last pass. With pass smoothing, we really need to have a finished pass that doesn't have smoothing turned on. So I'll turn on finish passes, and we'll just take one pass that is at 5% of whatever the tool diameter is. Now we can generate the operation again. Now you can see the uh, smoothing is on all of the interior passes and then we get very close here on the last one and then finally on the last one. You will may notice that there is actually a small radius here. That's because the radius of the pocket we said was 7 millimeters and the tool we chose was a 12 millimeter. So we actually get the opportunity to drive that corner just a little bit and that's a good idea when you're doing machining purposes to have a tool that's slightly smaller than the radius that you're machining. That gives you the opportunity to drive through there. We'll choose OK. Now we can do a verification of our program so far. Uh oh, when I created this operation I didn't put it in the program group. It's very easy to do. I'm simply going to hold down mouse button 1 and push it into the program group. So now it's under face top. So now we've got two operations. Let's look and see what they look like. Zig only face milling and then our 12 millimeter tool doing a follow part cut pattern around the plus sign with a finish pass to make it all complete. Okay, 
Looks good so far. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching.